Chile, Part 3 The South Chile, Part 3 The South, Table of Contents All about Chile With visiting and touring information Geography History Attractions And other points of interest Dr. Sidney Soclough Dr. Sydney 22 at gmail.com 2022 Narration by Dr. Sydney Soclough Zoe Phonemes and Nathan Coltov For a more complete discussion of YouTube navigation, please go to this video using the link here. Chapter 1 The South of Chile, Patagonia here are some places in Chile that we will be visiting, together with Santiago and Valparaiso. The region in the south of Chile is called Patagonia. Patagonia is a region located at the southern end of South America shared by Argentina and Chile. The region includes the southern section of the Andes Mountains. Argentina is on the eastern side of the Andes and an arid land with deserts, pampas and grasslands. The Chilean area on the west is wetter. The Andes region is a sparsely populated. At the northern end of Patagonia is the lake region. And in the far south of Patagonia is Tierra del Fuego. Here are three places of interest in this region. Puerto Montt. Puerto Chacabuco and Coyhaique. Chapter 2 Puerto Montt The area of Puerto Montt was first explored by an expedition under Juan de la Piedra in 1779. King Charles III of Spain ordered that territory be settled with farmers, artisans, and sent 200 families to fortify the area and secure his domains. Puerto Montt is a port city in southern Chile. Puerto Montt is 586 miles, or 943 kilometers south of Valparaiso. Puerto Montt is located at the northern end of the Raylan Cavi Sound. The Pan American Highway and the main north south railroad of Chile terminate in the city as do sea routes through the archipelago southward to Punta Arenas, Puerto Montt. In the lake region of south-central Chile, is one of the few good harbors in Chile. Puerto Montt is located on the northern tip of Rulancavi Inlet, in a bay protected on the west by the Chile Island. Here is Puerto Montt at the northern end of Rulancavi Sound. Most coastal cities rely at least in part on water transportation because of Chile's difficult terrain. Puerto Montt is a main port and gateway into the Chilean lake and volcano district. Puerto Montt is a commercial center for an agricultural hinterland, which yields grains, especially wheat, potatoes, and livestock, as well as for the offshore fishing grounds. The population of Puerto Montt is 175,000. Where does the ship dock? Most ships dock at the public pier inside of Canal Tanglo. Very large ships, however, must tender to the same pier. The public pier is nine blocks away from the center of town. There is an abundant availability of taxis at the pier. The cost of a trip to the center of town ranges from $6 to $10. Taxis are metered, but can also be hired by the hour. In any case, it is wise to settle on a price before traveling. This is a cruise ship at Puerto Montt. The industries of Puerto Montt include fish canning, tanning, and sawmilling. The setting of Puerto Montt amid forested hills, fjords, lakes, and the snow-capped Andes have made it a popular resort, despite earthquakes. Chapter 3 The History of Puerto Montt King Charles III of Spain ordered that the territory be settled with farmers and artisans, and sent 200 families to fortify the area and secure his domains. 
Puerto Montt was founded in 1852. The settlement was named for Manuel Montt who was then president of Chile. Chapter 4 German Settlement in Puerto Montt Many Germans settled in this area. Vincente Perez Rosales was the agent for the German settlement. This is a statue in Puerto Montt commemorating 100 years of German settlement. This is a monument commemorating 100 years of German settlement in Puerto Montt. Many of the settlers came from eastern Germany. This is a memorial to the German immigrants. The first families arrived here on November 28, 1852 on the ship Suzanne. These are names of the first immigrants from Saxony. These are names of the first immigrants from Hesse, Prussia, and Silesia. Early German settlers have given it a distinctive appearance. The original German settlers left their mark. As the city and surrounding areas still have a very distinctive European flavor. Most of the German immigrants we farmers. The Germans built substantial dwellings. Covered with the weather-resistant redwood shingles from the Alarissa tree. This is a German water mill. This is a German Lutheran church in Puerto Montt. This is a German Catholic church in Puerto Montt. This is an old German chapel. No longer in use. These are graveyards of German descendants who often adopted Spanish names. The substantial German homes in the area still exist today. Chapter 5 Puerto Montt Points of Interest This is a map of the central area of Puerto Montt. This shows some of the points of interest in Puerto Montt. The Redwood Cathedral, Iglesia de los Jesuitas, on the city's plaza is the city's oldest building. This shows the location of the Iglesia de los Jesuitas. The Redwood Cathedral, Iglesia de los Jesuitas, on the city's plaza is the city's oldest building. This shows the location of the Iglesia de los Jesuitas. This is a street in Puerto Montt. This is a typical house in Puerto Montt. Umbrellas on the Rotary International sign give a clue that Puerto Montt is a rainy city. This is a traditional residence covered with the weather-resistant redwood shingles. From the Alarissa tree. These are fountains on a lakefront plaza. This is a view of Puerto Montt from the bay. This is Calle Valdiviana showing earthquake damage. This is the Alarissa Mountain Hotel. Colegio San Francisco Javier is a Jesuit secondary school. Founded in 1859. Puerto Montt's waterfront Museo Juan Pablo II has displays on natural history. Archaeology. The island of Chile. Maritime history and weapons. Religious iconography in German colonization. This shows the location of the Museo Juan Pablo II. Recommended video, Puerto Montt. Chile, things to see and do in Puerto Montt. Chile and Puerto Varas. Chile, 2 minutes, 18 seconds. Chapter 7. The Chilean Lake District. Just outside of Puerto Montt is the beautiful Lake District. This shows the Chilean Lake District and the adjacent region in Argentina. The Chilean Lake District extends to the east and north of Puerto Montt and includes several national parks. The lakes and glaciers continue on the Argentina side of the Andes. Here is the entire region. Showing Puerto Montt, Puerto Varas, Fruit Alert. Lago Yankee Way and Volcano Osorno and Volcano Calbuco. Lake Yankee Way is a very large lake. 
the second largest in Chile, near Puerto Montt in the Lake District. This is a view of Lago Yankee Way and Volcano Osorna. Lago Todos Los Santos, Spanish for All Saints Lake, is in the Vicente Pérez Rosales National Park in the lakes region of southern Chile. Lago Todos Los Santos is 96 kilometers northeast of Puerto Montt and 76 kilometers east of Puerto Varas. Lago Todos Los Santos is also known as Lago Esmeralda o Emerald Lake. Due to the green color of its water, Petrowe Falls is in the Lake District, about a one-hour drive from Puerto Montt. Saltos del Rio Petrowe is on Rio Petrowe, near where it enters Lago Todos Los Santos. It is also very close to Volcano Osorna. This is a view of Petrowe Falls. This is Volcano Calbuco. This is Volcano Calbuco erupting in April of 2015. Chapter 8. Puerto Varas. The upscale resort town of Puerto Varas is in the Lake District near Puerto Montt. Puerto Varas is about 20 kilometers north of Puerto Montt on the shores of Lake Yankee Way. The two prominent volcanoes visible from almost anywhere in the region are Vulcan Osorna and Vulcan Calbuco. Vulcan Osorna is located almost midway in close to Lago Yankee Way and Lago Todos de Santos. Puerto Varas is known for its German traditions. The food. Fish and seafood. The natural environment. The casino. And the five-star hotels. Puerto Varas is also known as La Ciudad de Las Rosas or the City of Rosas. It was founded in 1854 by the Chante Pérez Rosales. The city is named after Antonio Varas, Minister of the Interior during the presidency of Manuel Montt, when the city was founded. The Mont administration offered lands around Lake Yankee Way for mostly German-speaking Europeans, German Swiss Austrians, Silesians, Alsatians, etc. to settle and farm. Puerto Varas was founded as the main port on the lake, connected by road to the nearest seaport, Puerto Mont. German colonization in Chile took place in the 19th century. Thanks to the selective immigration law enacted in 1845, the first German colonists settled the shores of Lake Yankee Way. More than 6,000 families, between 30,000 and 40,000 Germans, settled in the area of northern Patagonia, in the south of Chile. The Chilean government encouraged German immigration in 1848, a time of revolution in Germany. This homesteading program continued through the remainder of the 19th century. Subsequently, a new wave of German immigrants arrived in Chile, with many settling Santiago. The exact number of German Chileans is unknown, because many of the early arrivals' descendants have intermarried and assimilated over the past 150 years. Almost 56,000 are known to have been born in Germany. And approximate figures suggest 500,000 to 600,000 direct descendants. The German military culture had great influence on the army of Chile. At the end of the 19th century, the army adopted the Prussian military tradition. A German Chilean. Emil Corne reached the rank of commander-in-chief of the army in 1900. The population of Puerto Veras is 33,000. This is a map of the Cinta of Puerto Veras. Part of the tourist attractions of Puerto Veras is a large casino near the Plaza de Armas. This is a view of Puerto Veras. Chapter 9 Fruity Hour 
Frutier is a German colonial village on the shores of Lago Yankee Way. The city of Frutillar was founded by Vicente Pérez Rosales in 1856. This was after clearing the land and the arrival of German settlers in 1852. Frutillar is about 30 kilometers north of Puerto Varas and 50 kilometers from Puerto Montt. The population is 15,500. This is a typical housing Frutillar. The Museo Colonial Aliman. The German museum is open daily. It is located in Fruity Yar on Lake Yankee Way. The German colony that arrived to the city on 1856. The descendants of these settlers decided to leave these buildings for a museum that shows the way they lived. It is composed of a garden, machine warehouse, water mill, and the main house. The Teatro del Lago offers concerts all year, and it is located in the main coastal road of the bay. The theater is the largest in Chile, and the best acoustic theater ever built in South America. Every year there is a two-week concert, called Musical Festival or Semanas Musicale, at the end of January and first week of February. This cultural activity brings thousands of visitors to Teatro del Lago. Chapter 10 The Aysen Region The Aysen Region is within the Patagonian region of the south of Chile. The capital and largest city of the Aysen Region is Coyhaique with a population of 45,000. Puerto Chacabuco is near Coyhaique and is the main port of the region. Although the third largest in area in Chile, the Aysen region is the least populous of the 15 regions of the country, with a population of only 105,000. The shape of the landscape is marked by several glaciations that formed many lakes, channels and fjords. The Aysen region was named by Charles Darwin and Captain Fitzroy on the HMS Beagle expedition because this is where they saw the end of the ice as they traveled north up the coast of Chile. They agreed to call this region Iceland. And Iceland became Iceland, the name of the Iceland region. The terrain and form of Iceland is very similar to those of the Alaska Panhandle, the northern Norwegian coast, and New Zealand's Milford Sound region. This is a region of rugged Patagonia with the Andes Mountains, the Rio Simpson National Reserve, and the town of Koyeki. There is also the magnificent Akane Delser Park with many waterfalls, wetlands, and forests. Carretera Austral, CH7, runs 1,240 kilometers, 770 mi, from Puerto Montt through Koyeki and further south. The Aysen region has ice fields including the Northern Patagonian Ice Field and the Southern Patagonian Ice Field, the world's largest after those in Antarctica and Greenland. Here is the Aysen region, showing the Northern and Southern Patagonian Ice Fields. Along the fjord-indented coast of Chile, the Northern Patagonian Ice Sheets fall into the sea. 250 miles south of Puerto Montt. There are few such remote and underdeveloped places left on Earth. Laguna San Rafael National Park, reachable only by boat or plane, is one of its most popular tourist destinations. Chapter 11 This is the Aysen Fjord. The Aysen Fjord is a 40 mile or 70 kilometers long fjord stretching east to Puerto Chacabuco from the Moralita Channel, Canal Moralita. The Moralita Channel separates the Chanos Archipelago from the mainland of Chile. The Aysen River discharges at the head of Aysen Fjord. Puerto Chacabuco is at the head of this fjord. This show Puerto Chacabuco at the head of the Aysen Fjord. Puerto Aysen is on the Aysen River 4 kilometers above the Aysen Fjord. 
the Isen Fjord is number 7 on the list of the 10 most beautiful fjords of the world in a survey conducted by National Geographic Traveler magazine. This is a view of the Isen Fjord. This is an oath a view of the Isen Fjord. Ships anco in the Bay of Chacabuco and passengers attended to show up the hill, past the two buses, a taxis, although limited at times, they are not metered, so negotiate a price before traveling. A round trip to Wakaiki costs about $40. The transfer from ship to the pier takes about 15 minutes. Chapter 12. Puerto Chacabuco Puerto Chacabuco is in the Isen region and is located at the head of Isen Fjord. It is the main port of the region. Puerto Chacabuco is a small isolated settlement with a population of only 1,250. The town itself consists of one main road, a fish processing facility and a pie. There's not much to see in Puerto Chacabuco. Puerto Isen is a fronty-like village, about 10 miles north of the port, and is the area's main town. Before the great burnings of the Patagonian forests and the eruption of Mount Hudson Volcano in 1991, Puerto Isen was the main port in the Isen Fjord. The ashes and earth erosion decreased the navigability of ice and river. So the port had to be moved further to the coast where Puerto Chacabuco now stands. Puerto Chacabuco was named after the Battle of Chacabuco fought near Santiago in 1817 during the Chilean War of Independence. The Army of the Andes of the United Provinces of the Rio de la Plata, led by General Captain José de San Martín defeated the Spanish forces. Chapter 13. Coyaquil Coyaquil is the capital city of both the Coyaquil province and the Isen region of Chile, and was founded by settlers in 1929. Koyaki is a young city with a population of 55,000. Until the 20th century, Chile showed little interest in exploiting the remote Isen region. The Carretera Austral Road through Koyaki opened in the 1980s. Koyaki is surrounded by rivers, Simpson and Koyaki, and by mountains. The mountains may be snow covered throughout the year. Thus Koyaki is sometimes called the city of eternal snow. Temperature is moderate during the months of November through April. From May until October, temperatures can be comparatively cold and accompanied by the possibility of snowfall. Koyaki is a handsome city surrounded by dramatic mountains. It is the jumping-off point for visitors to travel through Chile and Patagonia's most beautiful and unspoiled landscapes. The pentagonal-shaped Plaza de Armas is at the center of Coyhaique. This is a view of the Plaza de Armas at the center of Coyhaique. This is a view of Coyhaique. Museo Regional de la Patagonia catalogues pioneer artifacts and Jesuit regalia. It also houses a fine collection of photographs on regional history, including the construction of the Carretera Austral. The Museo Regional de la Patagonia has photos of early 20th century pioneering in this region, as well as for the collections of household, farming, and early industrial artifacts from the same era. The Museo Regional de la Patagonia is just a short distance from the Plaza de Armas. This shows the location of the Museo Regional de la Patagonia. A visit shows how recently it was that many parts of southern Chile were developed. Chapter 14 The Rio Simpson National Reserve is one of the major highlights of the Isen region. 
The Rio Simpson National Reserve is a protected area of rugged geography with peaks reaching eager than 5,248 feet 1600 meters above sea level, creating valleys and narrow canyons. The Carinasis and Cascada de la Virgen rivers are branches of the Rio Simpson. Both are surrounded by beautiful scenery and lush vegetation. There are beautiful forests in the Rio Simpson National Reserve. A variety of animals live in the reserve. Among the most beautiful areas of the park are the Cascada de la Virgen and the Velo de Novia, Brides Vale, Waterfalls. Chapter 15 The Aiken Dulcer Private Park is known for its natural beauty and the transparent blue waters of Risco Lake. The Aiken Delser Park has botanical gardens with 32 species representative of the region. The Aiken Delser Park also has a participation forest area which invites visitors to join the campaign of landscape recovery in the areas of the park that have been cut down. The river trail takes you just over a mile into the deep nature of the Patagonia. Traveling through prairies in the humid forest that characterizes this part of the world. At the end of the trail is the impressive Old Man's Beard Waterfall. A short distance from Puerto Chacabuco is Lake Los Palos. This is an area of calm, crystalline waters with varied vegetation and the typical Patagonian birds that inhabit the area. Chapter 16 Chilean Fjords and Glaciers In southern South America there are primarily three ice fields with major glaciers, the northern and southern Patagonian ice field in the Andes, and the Cordillera Darwin in the very south. All of these ice fields are very vulnerable to changes in the climate. The glaciers in South America are found along the Andes Mountains in southern Argentina and Chile. The Patagonian ice sheet covered all of southern Chile and most of Argentina. During the last glacial period, around 20,000 years ago, this shows the two present-day remnants of the Patagonian ice sheet, the northern and southern Patagonian ice fields, the southern Patagonian ice field, Yellow Continentales or Campo de Yeloser, is located in the Andes between Argentina and Chile. It is the second largest contiguous extrapolar extent of ice, ice field, in the world. The southern Patagonian ice field is the big jet of two remaining parts of the Patagonian ice sheet, which covered all of southern Chile. The southern Patagonian ice field extends for approximately 220 miles, 350 kilometers, and has an area of 6,500 square miles, 16,800 square kilometers, of which roughly 83% is within Chile, and 17% is in Argentina. The ice mass feeds dozens of glaciers in the area including several in the Los Glaciares National Park in Argentina, as well as in Chile. An important part of the ice field is protected in national parks, such as the Bernardo O'Higgins and Torres del Paine National Park in Chile, and Los Glaciares in Argentina. The Northern Patagonian Ice Field, located in southern Chile, is the smaller of two remaining parts of the Patagonian ice sheet in the Andes Mountains of Lower South America. It is completely contained within the boundaries of Laguna San Rafael National Park. This shows the location of the Laguna San Rafael National Park. The San Rafael Glacier is one of the major outlet glaciers of the northern Patagonian ice field in southern Chile and is the tidewater glacier nearest the equator. The San Rafael Glacier calves into the Laguna San Rafael and is contained within Laguna San Rafael National Park. Laguna San Rafael National Park is located on the Pacific coast of southern Chile. The park is named for the Laguna San Rafael formed by the retreat of the San Rafael Glacier.
Laguna San Rafael National Park is located on the Pacific coast of southern Chile. The park is named for the Laguna San Rafael formed by the retreat of the San Rafael Glacier. This shows Laguna San Rafael formed by the retreat of the San Rafael Glacier. This again shows Laguna San Rafael formed by the retreat of the San Rafael Glacier. A fjord in Laguna San Rafael National Park that is more than 10 miles, 16 kilometers, long is one of the park's principal attractions. These are the ice fields of Chile. The glaciers of Chile cover 2.7% of the land area of the country, excluding Antarctica Chile now. The area in Antarctica claimed by Chile, by surface area, 80% of South America's glaciers lie in Chile. The largest glaciers of Chile are from the northern and southern Patagonian ice fields. Chapter 17 The southern coast of Chile has a large number of fjords and fjord-like channels from Cape Horn at 55 degrees south to the Rilancavi estuary at 42 degrees south. The glaciers going to the west flow into the fjords of the Patagonian channels of the Pacific Ocean. The glaciers going to the east flow into the Patagonian lakes Viedma and Argentino. And eventually, through the rivers de la Leona and Santa Cruz, to the Atlantic Ocean. Chilean fjords are mostly along the west coast of southern Chile. Chapter 18 what is a fjord, and why is it spelled that funny way? A fjord is a steep-sided inlet of the sea that has been scoured out by glacier. The word fjord is of Norwegian origin. And Norway is, of course, known for its many and spectacular fjords. Fjords are prehistoric relics of ancient glacial activity. As a glacier flows through a valley it cuts into the land and deepens the valley. As the glacier cuts into the land, it deepens the valley. And this often resulted in a steep-sided U-shaped valley. The melting of the glacier leaves behind a glaciated valley. The melting of the glaciers at the end of the ice age resulted in a rise in the sea level. The resulting drowned valley is called a fjord. This is a valley with a glacier. If the glacier melts and the sea level rises, this will become a fjord. A good example of a U-shaped glaciated valley that is far above sea level and very far not a drowned valley is Yosemite Valley in California. When glaciers scoured out these regions, they were above sea level. When the sea level rose, the valleys were drowned by the sea. In some fjords side streams plunge hundreds of feet over the edge of the fjord. Some of the world's highest waterfalls are of this type. Recommended video, Patagonia Vacation Travel Guide Expedia, 11 minutes. Recommended video, Ice and Patagonia Chile, 3 minutes. 15 seconds. Chapter 20. Tierra del Fuego. In the far south of Chile is the region of Tierra del Fuego. Although part of South America Tierra del Fuego is separated from the mainland by the Strait of Magellan, or in Spanish, Estrecho de Magallanes. Tierra del Fuego is shared between Chile and Argentina, with about two-thirds being Chilean, and one-third Argentinian. The region of Tierra del Fuego consists of one large island called Isla Grande de Tierra del Fuego, and numerous smaller islands Isla Grande de Tierra del Fuego is shared between Chile and Argentina. The principal cities in this region are Punta Arenas in Chile, and Ushua in Argentina. Punta Arenas in Chile is on the Strait of Magellan. And Ushuaia in Argentina is on the Beagle Channel. The Beagle Channel. The Straits of Magellan to the north. And the open ocean Drake Passage to the south.
are the three navigable passages around South America between the Pacific and the Atlantic Oceans. The Beagle Channel is about 240 kilometer, or 150 miles long, and is about 5 kilometer, or 3 miles wide, at its narrowest point. The Strait of Magellan is 350 miles, or 560 kilometers long. Although the strait follows a twisting course among numerous islands and channels, and has a cold, foggy climate, it was an important sailing ship route before the building of the Panama Canal. The Panama Canal was completed in 1914, and shortened the Atlantic to Pacific Passage by several thousand miles. The strait's major port is Punta Arenas. The Argentinian city of Ushuaia on the Beagle Channel claims to be the southernmost city in the world. Located at 54.8 degrees south, Punta Arenas in Chile is the southernmost city on the mainland of South America. There is the very small Chilean town of Puerto Williams on the south side of the Beagle Channel that is very slightly further south than Ushuaia. So it can probably lay claim to being the southernmost town of any size in the world. Chapter 21 Punta Arenas Punta Arenas is the capital of the Chilean province of Magallanes. Punta Arenas is on the Strait of Magellan. Punta Arenas is the largest and most commercially important city in the Patagonia region of Chile. This is a view of Punta Arenas. Punta Arenas was founded in 1849 by Colonel José de los Santos Madones. Punta Arenas flourished as a port of call and calling station until the opening of the Panama Canal in 1914, and the replacement of coal still mined nearby by fuel oil as a maritime fuel. Punta Arenas lies along the Strait of Magellan between the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans and is the southernmost large city in the world. Punta Arenas Orientation here are some of the principal streets in Punta Arenas and the location of the Maritime Museum. Along the shoreline and by the port is Avenida Castaneda. Here is a cruise ship docked at Punta Arenas. The Union Club is located across from the northwest corner of Plaza de Armas. Some of the 19th century buildings in Punta Arenas are very attractive, with creative use of metal siding and trim. A style they call Magellanic Victorian, somewhat of a cross between English Victorian and Moorish. An excellent example of the Magellanic Victorian style is the Union Club, formerly the home of Sarah Braun, who was a wealthy resident of Punta Arenas. The Plaza de Armas is a good point of reference. It is bound on the north and south by Pedro Mont and Roca. On the east and west of the plaza is 21 de Mayo and Jose Noguera. Punta Arenas is now the service center of a large sheep raising area. It processes and exports hides, wool, and frozen mutton. Its port facilities also handle local lumber and petroleum products. The nearby Tierra del Fuego oil fields. The attractions of the free port, and the maintenance of naval, air, and army garrisons have all contributed to the city's modern growth. The present population of Punta Arenas is 125,000, making it by far the largest city in the Tierra del Fuego region. Tourism is also important for Punta Arenas. The port also provides a base for South Atlantic fishing boats and Antarctic research vessels. Almost all of the houses are sheet metal, painted bright colors to make up for the drab climate. 
the weather-worn streaks of this active city are a mixture of old mansions built during the wool boom of the late 19th century. Cathedrals. Homes with colorful corrugated rooftops. High-rise office buildings and modern hotels. Punta Arenas is a melting pot of various cultures from English sheep herders to Portuguese sailors. This is a typical house in Punta Arenas. This is the statue of Magellan in the Plaza de Armas Punta Arenas. This complex statue in the plaza includes a three-tailed mermaid. This is a plaque on base of statue commemorating the 400th anniversary of the discovery of the Strait of Magellan. This is a sculpture of a compass in Punta Arenas. Recommended video, Top Things to See and Do in Punta Arenas. Chile. 1 minute. 20 seconds. Chapter 22. Torres del Paine National Park has been named one of the top 10 national parks in the world. Puerto Natales is the city closest to Torres del Paine National Park. Torres del Paine National Park is known a miniature Alaska. With breathtaking scenery. Chile, Part 3. The South, Table of Contents. Thanks for watching.